hope you enjoy today's message on Acts chapter 2 verse 38 preaching channel. Please like, comment, subscribe, share, and hit the bell to help us grow. Praise the Lord, church. We got about one minute before service begins. Why don't we stand to our feet? And as we do here in Porter, we're going to worship the Lord just for a few moments. Can you begin to put your hands together? And let's magnify the name of Jesus. God, we love you today. We exalt your name this morning. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your mercy. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. God, you have been so good to us, Lord. Jesus, we lift our voice to you in praise and admiration today. Glory and honor to your name. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. If you have a need in your body, we invite you to come forward and our ministry team will pray with you. But let's worship with them as they sing right now. Let's lift up the name of Jesus this morning. Lord, you're worthy to be praised, Jesus. Hallelujah. the mountains, told the wind and waves be still, you cast out demons, bid the empty soul be filled, now there's breakthrough, now there's freedom in your name, you gave us power, and the keys to do the Accusers drop their stones, showed us mercy with your mighty miracles. Now there's breakthrough, now there's freedom in your name. You gave us power and the keys to do the same. Now we proclaim in Jesus' name.
of the Lord, and a very special happy Mother's Day to all of our moms. Go ahead and clap for them. Church, why don't you take a moment right now and greet one another. If you see a mother standing next to you, make sure you tell her happy Mother's Day. Guests listening online right now, we do invite you to click on that link right there at Facebook and fill out one of our online guest cards. And if you are here in person this morning and you would like to learn a little bit more about our church, we have cards right there at the back of the pew with a QR code. And you can use your phone and fill out an online guest card right where you are right now. And if you would uh, be interested in having some of our Bible studies that we offer on Wednesday nights, very introductory Bible study classes. We have Next Steps that's available every Wednesday in room 102, and you are welcome to be a part of that at any time. As far as announcements go, I want to remind you that this Friday night is Noodles and Doodles. This is a spaghetti dinner, an art auction uh, sponsored by our Sunday School Department. And just for $5 on this Friday night, you can join us for a wonderful spaghetti dinner and a silent auction for the artwork that our Sunday School kids have done. And this is just a great way to raise a little bit of money for our Sunday School Department. And that is this Friday night. Deadline to purchase tickets will be this Wednesday. Also coming up is our crawfish boil, and that is taking place on May the 22nd, and that's from 1 to 5 on a Saturday. If you are interested in getting tickets for that, uh, there's a table set up right out there in the hallway next to the water fountains for both noodles and doodles and the crawfish boil. It's $20 for all you can eat, and uh, the price goes down a little bit if you're 13 and under. So if you are interested in those little critters, you can... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you can you can join Brother McCoy and the rest of you who like crawfish. Um, for those of you that don't like crawfish, we have hamburgers. Yes. <laughs> that is the American way, hamburgers. <laughs> for five bucks, you can get a hamburger at our crawfish boil. Praise the Lord. Isn't it good to be in the house of the Lord this morning? This evening, there will be no service here this evening. We want to give all of our families the opportunity to be able to celebrate with your moms on this very special day. And in honor of Mother's Day, I do want to recognize the first lady of this church, Sister McCoy. She is absolutely amazing. And... She uh, specifically told us to not recognize her, so that means that we do and must recognize her because she is an amazing pastor's wife, amazing mother. We love her and appreciate her so very much. We have a bouquet of flowers for you and a card. Thank you, Sister McCoy, for everything that you do. You are such a wonderful example of being a nurturing, kind, loving person, and it's an honor to be able to call you pastor's wife.
Thank you so much. You can be seated. I do appreciate this. I love my church family, and I have notes because I am presenting to others today. Thank you. Those are gorgeous flowers. Oh, my goodness. Beautiful. Thank you so much. I, um, you know, we all have our story. And uh, some stories are beautiful. Some stories are bittersweet. And some of you mommies might have stories that are all sunshine and roses, but more often than not, we've got stories of heartache. Because when you love that much, things hurt. There is heartache involved. But I want to say happy Mother's Day to all of our mothers here. And... Um, I'm so glad to be sharing this journey with each and every one of you, this journey of motherhood. And it takes a church. You know, some people say that, uh, that it takes a village. No, it takes a church. And mamas, I'm with you. I want us to raise our babies together, and I want us to teach them in the ways of the Lord together. And I'm so thankful for all of you. So happy Mother's Day to you. And thank you so much for my gift. Okay, now it is my turn to honor someone who I look up to very, very much. She has been faithful and loving to her God, faithful and loving to her husband, and faithful and loving to this church. And I want to honor our grand lady today, Sister Barbara Green. Would you stand and give her a hand, please? Happy Mother's Day, Sister Green. We love you so much, and we want you to know that we honor you today. You can be seated. Thank you. Now, there are two types of mothers that I would like to stand and us give a hand to because I believe that, uh, for one, the season of life can be very hard and very, very special and um, and I want to honor our new mommies today. If you have a baby that is two years or younger, would you please stand? I want us all to give these new mommies a hand because their job is wonderful, but it is hard. And our C, I see our... Oh, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> um, one of our little angels must have possibly pulled the fire alarm. <laughs> Woo. <laughs> Help them, Lord. <laughs> okay, well, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Interesting. Children make life so interesting. <laughs> and the next, the next types of mothers that I would like to honor are those who have taken in children that did, they did not birth or may not be their blood, but they are taking care of them because they saw a need and the Lord gave them a burden. If you have ever taken in a child or adopted a child, would you please stand? Can we give these mothers a hand? <laughs> Motherhood is a special job, and it takes a special kind of love. And I am so thankful for each of you that have given a chance to others who would not have a chance otherwise. And I want to take a moment. I see my mama in the crowd. She's home from Tennessee. Happy Mother's Day, Mama. <laughs> Thank you. 
Now, this year, we decided to do something a little different with our Mother's Day. And although we are honoring our mothers here, the church was given an opportunity to give to mothers all over the world and in the North American Missions Program. Mother's Memorial is a program within the United Pentecostal Church International. It is the, uh, it reaches out and it, it helps mothers and caregivers all over North America and across the globe. Mother's Memorial is the nurturing arm of the UPCI and supports missionaries in America and overseas, students' education, foreign and domestic. It provides appliances when there are none in third world countries. It supports adoption and troubled youth. It gives support to many women's ministries within our organization. So I want to show you what you did this year for this program. I want to thank you so much for all of your giving. Thank you to all of the husbands, the family, and friends. Brother, could we put up our Diamond Club members here? These are all the Diamond Club members who were uh, made Diamond Club members by giving $100 or more. This is the offering that we are getting to send to Mother's Memorial. Each of you gentlemen, loved ones, family members who gave to this, would you please give yourself a hand? And mothers, let's give them a hand. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for your giving. And now, what we've all been waiting for is to hear the Mother of the Year. Our uh, third place runner-up, I want to say a few things about her. Sister Tessie Hall, <laughs> they gave it away. <laughs> I asked the children of these mothers <laughs> for what their mother meant to them and what were some attributes that they admired about her. And for Sister Tessie, I have a personal story. I remember her when I was just 11 years old, and I remember her smile and the way that she made me feel when I visited a church that eventually became my home church, and I thought she was the most beautiful lady in the whole world. But her children say her devotion to God and her family, her willingness to serve others, her laughter, her desire, her teachable spirit, her smile, which I agreed, and her voice. She has a healing voice. Sister Tessie, we honor you today. We love you so much. Happy Mother's Day. <laughs> to our second place winner, this lady, I haven't had a chance to get to know very well, but what I've seen is just so beautiful, so poised, always put together, always in style, and so sweet. Some of the favorite attributes that her daughter said about her, she's hardworking, she loves her family, and she is dedicated to improving each and every day. And she has made an incredible contribution to her daughter and brother's walks with God. Our second place runner, Sister Cherie Heck. God bless you. Happy Mother's Day. <laughs> Happy Mother's Day, Sister Cherie. Now, for this last one, I'm going to make her come up here and I'm going to <laughs> present her with this sash. And, um, and hopefully get my picture snapped with her. But um, I want to say that this lady is such an example, so sweet always. She is kind. She is gentle. She um, is beautiful. And she gives of herself, always faithful to this church. And her daughter says she always encourages me when I feel down. And that is so important, mothers, because so many times, mommies, we feel discouraged ourselves. 
But we have to rise above that, and we have to be that encouraging arm to our kids, no matter how we feel. And so I think that she exemplifies this so very much, this trait that is so important. And this year's Mother of the Year goes to Sister Andrea Schrader. <laughs> Y'all, that was fun. <laughs> I'm so very, very thankful for our mothers, for our ladies. I love that we could give out these awards. I love that we could, you know, have something to do special for our ladies here. And um, I hope each and every one of you got a flower this morning. And if you did not get one, grab one on the way out. But happy Mother's Day. And I hope you have a wonderful day spending time with your family this evening. Uh, right now, we're going to get ready for our beautiful children's choir, if they will get ready to come sing. Sister Samantha Pitts and the children's choir. And we can go ahead and play that video, brother, while they, while they come out. God bless you. Happy Mother's Day.
wasn't that awesome? Y'all did so good. Excellent. What a beautiful message in that song. We're going to ask our ushers to go in and come forward. We're going to worship the Lord in our giving. If you would like to give this morning, you can use an envelope there at the back of the pew, or you can do text to give at 832-957-9201. And you can always visit the website at porterabc.org and click on the donates page right there. Let's take a moment and pray over our tithes and offerings. Loving Master, we're so thankful this morning for the opportunity to be in your house today. Lord, we pray that you would bless the tithes and offerings, that you would multiply them many times for your kingdom. In the lovely name of Jesus, we pray. And everybody say amen. Let's worship with them as they sing this morning. Worship the Lord this morning. Hallelujah. The name above all names, the one who reigns forever, still the same. Praise the name. Who came expecting Jesus, an apostolic service this morning? It's Mother's Day, but we can still have a supernatural outpouring of the Spirit. Let's lift up the name of Jesus. No other name that's stronger, no other name. Forever I will praise the name. No other name can heal us, no other name can free us, no other name. So precious, I will praise the name.
so thankful to be in his house this morning. My goodness. My goodness. A lot of places we could be, but there's no place as great as being in the house of the Lord. So great to see everybody and give honor to all of our guests here this morning. I get... Go ahead. That's all right. do give honor to every single mother, each and every one of you, and all those that have stepped in and taken that place and that responsibility in a uh, person's life. Also, uh, our hearts are with everyone that this day is not a, you know, just all happy and everything. Some have lost children. Some, this is a difficult day, and we understand that as well. And our hearts and prayers are with you during this day. So thankful that God is here in this place. Amen. Now, I know typically, somebody asked me once, I told Bishop, as an evangelist, you know, what, what were the three services that if you had a choice you prefer not to preach? I said, that's easy, Mother's Day, Father's Day, and Easter. Because that's, that's the days where everybody just comes to be with family and all that, and that can, you know, that can be a, a little hard sometimes. But I do know that in today, while... I may not, you may not be able to really uh, get a hold of everything that may have to do with the mom. I do believe that there are some attributes of some mothers in the Bible that regardless of whether you're a father, mother, young person, adult, it really doesn't matter. There are some attributes that all of us should allow to become a huge part of our life and a consistent part of our life. And I'd like to hit on one of those this morning, if you would, I give honor to my wonderful, sweet, precious wife. She is incredible. Not only does she raise our children, she helps raise me, and that usually proves to be more difficult than all the kids combined. And so um, I have four children, she has five, and her oldest, me, creates a lot of drama. Give honor to my mother-in-law. My mother's not here, but give honor to her as well and to our wonderful sister Green. Love her very, very much so thankful for the example that these precious ladies set. If you have your Bibles, I'd like to go to 1 Samuel chapter 1 and starting at verse 5. You know, really to be honest, I told my wife this this morning as she was running around trying to get everything ready for today, trying to fix the kids, trying to stop Aubrey from having a meltdown because her dress was not the one she wanted to wear that day and trying to make Ben wear clothes at all. And, uh, and also while trying to tie neckties on, on young boys that do not want to comb their hair and, and, you know, making a quick sniff test to make sure everybody took a bath and then shoving mints all down their throat for the sake of their teachers that would be in their face this morning. And I, I told her, I said, you know, really, Mother's Day, we ought to celebrate it a little early. <laughs> or, or, you know, something, it doesn't quite seem to make sense on Mother's Day. It seems like you work harder than any other time to get rid of them for a picture and this or that. But we understand and we appreciate why you do that because the truth is if we took on the burden of getting all the kids dressed, you probably would not want a picture. Um, they'd be like, who are all those kids? None of them look like they're wearing the same thing. Uh, I just put blankets on all of them. So not only, you know, you're here and we celebrate you today, but we also understand that if you you have worked extremely hard to get ready for your celebration today. Thank you for everything that you do. First Samuel chapter 1 and starting at verse 5. It says, But unto Hannah he gave a worthy portion, for he loved Hannah. But the Lord had shut up her womb, and her adversary also provoked her sore for to make her fret because the Lord had shut up her womb. And as he did so year by year, when she went up to the house of the Lord, so she provoked her, therefore she wept and did not eat. Then said Elkanah, her husband, to her, Hannah, why weepest thou? And why eatest thou not? And why is thy heart grieved? Am not I better to thee than ten sons? So Hannah rose up after they had eaten in Shiloh, and after they had drunk. Now Eli the priest sat upon a seat by a post of the temple of the Lord. And she was in bitterness of soul and prayed unto the Lord and wept sore. And she vowed a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, if thou wilt indeed look on the affliction of thine handmaid and remember me and not forget thine handmaid, but wilt give unto thine handmaid a man-child, that's a boy, 
Then I will give him unto the Lord all the days of his life, and there shall no razor come upon his head. And it came to pass as she continued praying before the Lord that Eli marked her mouth. He noticed her mumbling. And now Hannah, she spake in her heart, only her lips moved, but her voice was not heard. Therefore Eli thought she had been drunken. And Eli said unto her, How long wilt thou be drunken? Put away thy wine from thee. And Hannah answered and said, No, my Lord, I am a woman of a sorrowful spirit. I have drunk neither wine nor strong drink, but have poured out my soul before the Lord. Count not thine handmaid for a daughter of Belial, for out of the abundance of my complaint and grief, have I spoken hitherto? Then Eli answered and said, Go in peace, and the God of Israel grant thee thy petition that thou hast asked of him. Uh, and, and, and I'll get into this in just a moment. We'll read a little bit further, but I'm going to take a little while today on beyond the promise. Life beyond the promise. Lord Jesus, we love you so much this morning. I'm so thankful for all that you are doing in our lives. I thank you for each and every one of these precious people. And I ask that you would speak to us so clearly today in a way that every single person in this room and those listening and watching online can understand and that you would do something in every heart in this place today. And we give you all the praise and the honor and glory to your name, Jesus. And everyone said amen. Amen. Turn to two or three people say, man, you look great today. And you may be seated. If you notice at all today that my mic is a little this or a little that, it is a new one. You can uh, get, get upset with me, not the sound team. They do an incredible job. I take very poor directions sometimes. And if, you know, that may not even be the sound thing. That may be God saying, hey, that's a good point. Just stay there for a little bit. So, you know, we don't want to get away, get in the way of what God is doing. But, unfortunately, it's going to be very hard to go back to microphone. I use my hands all the time, and now that I get to experience, I don't know that I can ever go back. So, I may just have somebody, we'll make a new position. Somebody walks around with a microphone, so I can just keep using my hands. Anyway. If you really want to shut me up, just, just tie my hands together. I, I can't say a thing. But uh, very expressive. Thank you. Who told me I was all right? I knew it was you, Sister Mary. I tell you what, my goodness. Hey, I, what did we say last week? One of the most uh, unsought positions in a church and the most appreciated is that of an encourager. And she is an encourager. I'm th- I go to a church full of encouragers. I'm going to tell you, I'm so, so thankful for each of you. So we see in this scripture that Hannah, she wants a child. That, uh, now in this scripture, um, Elkanah has two wives because he's crazy. And um, did not want any money at all and, and did not want to, uh, I, I don't know how that worked. I do not want to know how, I mean, I got the best there was. I mean, that, that, that was it. Um, but one of his wives had, had children, but Hannah did not. And so for those of you that think that this was a best friend type of situation, it wasn't because uh, whatever you call her, Mary, a friend in marriage, whatever. I don't know why you'd want to make it more complicated. But, you know, she tells Hannah, she, the Bible says she provokes her constantly, you know. Look, I have these kids, you have nothing, but we're glad you're here to cook and clean. You know, well, thank you for your contribution and all of that. And so Hannah is just worked up. I mean, she is provoked. She's angry and, and, and she's sad. She wants a child. She, she is speaking of, of a child. Oh, don't walk out on that just yet. Sister Bria, turn. You know what? No, it's ain't your job. Give it to Daddy. Let him show that baby off. We got a brand new member. We have Delilah Majors here. My goodness, this is her first church service. My goodness, she is a doll. I'm gonna tell you, Abs- absolute angel. And uh, we're so thankful for her and that Mama's doing good and Daddy's heart has been stolen. And so, but Hannah is distraught. She says, I want one of those, you know. I mean, this would have been a very rough time. She'd have looked up here and watched them singing and watched you, you know, know, sharing your baby with everybody else unless you're on the other side or like you can look, you don't touch, you know. You never know. You you know, be careful. Sometimes you go and you 
oh, I'm going to kiss on the baby. And if you see mama's eyes turn into flaming swords, that, that you, not, not this one. You know, some of them are like, here, take it. Pastor, I'm bringing it back to the end of church. You know, <laughs> they, they have not slept in a week. And so they're like, here, take it. Just, uh, you know, let me know where she's at, he's at. But then some are like, no, 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 don't touch. Hannah would have looked at that and been like, I wish I had one of those. And she, she's gone past desire and want. She is just sorrowful in her spirit. And she goes and she's begging God and she's praying and asking God, please, please, I, I want a baby. What, what, what do I have to do? I'm desperate. I'll do anything, God. I'm so desperate. I want a child of my own. And Eli's over there listening and he doesn't know what her need is. He doesn't know her situation. He just sees this lip move. And, and, and according to him, it looks like a drunk person that's just kind of stumbling around and just kind of going through the motions. He's like, look, hey, cut that out. She's like, I'm not drunk. You don't hear the words that I'm saying, but I'm sorrowful. I am just, I'm distraught. I'm out. He says, well, you know, whatever it is you're asking for, you know, God's going to give it to you. And she believes. The Bible says she gets up, she leaves, and she's not sorrowful anymore. She's made a promise. She says, God, I, I'm so desperate for this baby. If you give me a child, I will turn around and I will give it right back to you. Now, that's not, that's not uncommon for us. Some of you have promised everything plus the car you own and the house to God if he gets you. you, you God, if you get me this job, it's all yours. I, I'll, I'll give you 80% of my salary if you'll just give me this job. We'll get Get the young men. God, if you'll just let that girl look my way, I will spend the rest of my life worshiping you. I'll run the aisles all day long. I'll stay in the altar. Come on. Or you get a doctor's report that you don't want to hear. And it's, God, if you will heal me, all I, I won't ever ask for anything else, but if you will heal me. And man, we make some promises when we're in a tight spot. We start saying some things. We start getting out of our comfort zone. I mean, we, and then we are some Indian giver people. Because now the Bible says, Hannah goes down. It says it came to pass that the time was come. And it says she conceives. She has a son. And then it comes time. And, and I don't know, I, because you can't really look into the Emotion behind this scripture completely. Uh oh, yes, Lord. I felt a more sensitive spirit flow into that microphone. And it says, It came time for all of his house to go and to offer unto the Lord the yearly sacrifice. But Hannah went not up, for she said unto her husband, I will not go up until the child be weaned. Then I will bring him that he may appear before the Lord and there abide forever. And Elkanah, her husband, said unto her, Do what seemeth thee good. Tarry until thou have weaned him. Only the Lord establish his word. So the woman abode and gave her son suck until she weaned him. Now, maybe she really was saying, You know what? I'm going to honor my word. I just need to get him weaned. But then there's that other side. I wonder if she's like, Listen, now that he's here, when you hear that thump, that means God's speaking to you. How many heard that thump? See, I'm telling you, God is speaking to everybody in this place this morning. Receive it. All of a sudden, there's a, it's not a promise anymore. It's not just a, you know, a prayer in the wind. Now there's a baby. And so it, I, I wondered, I'm not knocking her. I'm not saying she wasn't honoring her promise. I just wonder if there's a little bit like, look, I'd like to spend a little time with him. You know, it really would be better if we brought him later. And honestly, I think the priest probably would have agreed because I've seen some of your children and you've seen mine. And there are times nobody wants to take them home. Like, look, this one needs to eat and take a nap and then hand it on over. But right now is not the time for me to babysit this child. So I'm sure Eli would have agreed. Listen, spend a little more time with it. Uh, raise the child a little bit. Uh, I got a lot to do besides, you know, bottle feeding the baby or how. Anyway, however that worked. Uh, but then the Bible says that when she winged him, she brings him. It says, they slew a bullock and brought the child to Eli. And she said, oh, my Lord, as the, thy soul liveth, 
My Lord, I am the woman that stood by thee here praying unto the Lord. For this child I prayed, and the Lord hath given me my petition which I asked of him. Therefore also I have lent him to the Lord. As long as he liveth, he shall be lent to the Lord. And he worshiped the Lord there. There's a lot of things she could have. She could have said, you know what? I know I made a promise, but Eli doesn't even know who I am. There's a lot of people that come through here and pray. He gets so many promises and he prays for so many people. He's not going to remember me. There's no way that he's going to remember. I think, we can, I think we can slide by this. Or she could have said, you know what? I don't know that this was God answering this prayer. Maybe this was just how things work and it was my time. Maybe, maybe that's what it was. Maybe this wasn't even God. Maybe this is just the way it, you know, this, this was the time for us to have it. Or God, you know, I made that promise when I was in a tight spot. Surely God won't hold me to what I promised him when I was in a bind. God, if you'll put my marriage back together, it's all yours. And now it's back together and you ain't all his. God, if you'll heal my body, I'll never miss another service. But you already had the good report back from the doctor. But, but the other part of your pro come on. We've got to learn to live beyond the promise. We've got to learn to be faithful beyond when we say we're going to do something and God comes through and then all of a sudden we're like, yeah, well, but, but, but it's not like that anymore. The greatest thing we can do, hey, I'm thankful for every promise, but if you promised God you'd give him everything, he's going to hold it accountable. The Bible says even our idle words are being recorded. That means if I've ever been to an altar and I say, God, if you'll do this, I'll do this. God marks down, says, done. I'm going to remember it. Honor your word. Let your yea be yea and your nay be nay. If you say it, stand by it. Some of you owe God like 23 laps today. Four hallelujahs. Some of you are supposed to have already been baptized. I mean, I, 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 come on. We've got to learn how to do that. I'm thankful. I'll tell you, there's a reason. I had somebody tell me once, are we getting it? Is it getting a little better? So you can't really prepare to get a mic right without everybody being in here. Because believe it or not, it sounds one way when you're not in here. It sounds a whole lot different when you are in here. But we... Just give me a sign if I need to do something different. Okay, we're good. We got a great team. Thank you for being so patient. Give yourself a hand. This is wonderful. Y'all must have children. You're like, oh, it's all right. He'll grow out of it. It's all right. I had somebody ask me once because uh, uh, the marriages that I've done, or I shouldn't say marriages, the ceremonies, and, and they come up and said, you know, Brother McCoy, you trying to talk them out of it? I said, why? They said, man, you really pointed a lot of negative stuff out of that. I said, no, I'm not trying to talk them out of it. I just want them to be very well aware of what they're getting into. And they say, because if you think, just because you've been on the phone for the last three months listening to each other breathe <laughs> and competing with who's going to hang up first, good night, good night. Okay, okay, I'm going to hang up, okay. You didn't hang up. No, you hang. And then you're married and you got, you know, three kids. Like, Bye. You're like, hello? 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 You call them back. Hey, I think we got disconnected. No, I hung up. Oh, okay. You know, when you're, when you're young and, boy, you know, you're just in love and you got finals the next day. It's 8 o'clock. You got to be up at 6. It's 3 o'clock in the morning. You're, I'm so tired, I know, but I can just talk to you forever. And then, I mean, and you, you watch the sun come up. Call mama when the kids finally went to bed at midnight. Hey, I just want to go to bed. <laughs> Things change. You've only seen each other when the teeth are brushed and everything. You haven't seen him when he hasn't brushed his teeth in 24 hours. Oh, it's rough. You smell it through the phone. It's bad. <laughs> the things we'll do, I remember there's, and I probably, y'all probably heard it before, I, my mom came home and 
they had these shirts that I guess I can't believe I bought it it was so ugly they must have been giving them away and it was like copper brown and it had a this square was a different color and uh, y'all probably don't know what that was but I think whoever made it was somebody crisscross y'all <laughs> I'm from Port Arthur. Y'all may not have a clue who that is. But I was like, man, that, that shirt is put together all over the place. And, man, I, I thought that is the ugliest thing. I'm never going to wear that shirt. And there's a little girl, you know, that, that I kind of liked. I mean, I, I hadn't fell, fallen in love yet because I hadn't met my wife. But, you know, I was like, oh, and we were kids. She's like, oh, I love that shirt. I was like, I'll, I'll get it. I wore that thing to school, wore it to the church. I, I wore that thing everywhere. They were like, oh, that must be your favorite shirt. No, I hate it, but somebody else likes it. <laughs> then you get married and it's all about comfort. <laughs> Things change. And a lot, there's too many people that get in relationships like, oh, it's going to be amazing. It's gonna, I'm going to get flowers every morning. I'm going to get breakfast and bread. No, 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 <laughs> no, no. <laughs> There will be a banana in the bowl. There will be an apple. There's Cheerios. And if you marry a tyrant like I did, all the good milk leaves the house and you got some kind of nutty milk called almond milk and that don't go good with anything. God hates every false way. Milk does not come from almonds. I went to see the majors the other night, and do you know they, never mind, Brother Barry makes me be careful on my diet. I repent in advance. Do you know that they have fruity pebbles with the Lucky Charm marshmallows in them? Don't tell me God can't do anything. I don't know what all is going on in this country, but what they need to do is hire the person that said, hey, let's put these two together. This is something. That person needs to be on a board somewhere deciding the future of the country. And then he had regular milk. I'm telling you. It's amazing what we go into it. We're like, do you take them? Uh huh. God's got some of your numbers. Uh huh. You were like, He ain't talking about me. So we do our vows. We're like, For better? For worse. For richer? For poor. It's, no, no, not in sickness. In sickness, you're going to get sick. Let me tell you, my wife could get sick. She could have 104 degrees uh, taking care of kids. If I feel a little off, I need a medic. I need chicken soup. I need a get well. I mean, we some we we turn into some babies real quick. I know we're supposed to be the stronger, but I'm gonna tell you, you let us get a fever, it's like shut it down. Shut it down. It's 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 over. I married this sweet girl. Now when, when we when we first met. Oh my goodness, I'm a tell number one, I had my own business. I was doing real good. I, first gift, I think, was a cell phone or something. I mean, I was like, man, I was pulling out all the stops. This is the one. This is the one. We this, this one's staying. Whatever we gotta do, this one. And man, it, it was doing good. Business was doing good. I had just bought bought another new truck, and man, I'd had that thing lifted, because you know you gotta do that and put big tires on it to make it reasonable. And man, I was like, oh, it's doing good. And and, and then God began to deal with me and, and, and I started preaching. Well, that's a little different environment. I sold the nice truck and got started driving a car with 180,000 miles on it. And uh, bless my mother-in-law's heart. My, my wife says she started crying when she started telling her. And I had all these plans. I'm like, we're going to build, we built houses. That's what we did. We built houses. My dad used to buy land and then we'd, we'd put shot, we'd put, uh, we'd start developing houses on it. He, he just built them. And so I was like, this is the plan. I already had the plan. I knew what I was going to build. This is going to be awesome. And next we're moving into a 1968 mobile home. No AC because the cats have ripped all the insulation out from underneath. We chased off possums and raccoons and everything else. And we went in there and it had that top of the line, state of the art paneling that people had tried to paint 1,400 times only to discover it doesn't work. 
it had that highly sought after custom particle board floor. You could spill a cup of water and just the whole floor would disintegrate. It had that good, that real good thin wall water pipe running all so you got a, every freeze you got a couple of different breaks and so you just replace the whole thing a little bit at a time and all of a sudden boy I, that, that's what I brought her home to you know what she never said a thing I didn't know you can make a mobile home look that good she went to work she was painting she was doing this doing that she didn't complain about it I'm so thankful for a wife that was faithful on the other side of I do I'm so thankful for one that said, hey, listen, when I stood up and said, it's me and you, it's me and you in the good and in the bad, I've seen her, I'd bring home, we would make extra money, I'd go all the way to Louisiana or deep east Texas and I'd buy these messed up fifth wheels where, I mean, it just looked like it went through a storm, I'd bring them home and we would go, we'd remodel them, she'd, she'd sew and do curtains on them, repaint walls, we'd put a new floor in it, boy, I'd put new tires and paint the wheel, man, we'd have that thing looking all good and then we'd take it and we'd do our circuit we would travel for a year and we'd end in west texas where the oil boom was happening and we'd sell it there in the oil boom and then i'd go back and get another and we'd do it all over again she didn't complain well i'm telling you working everything and she put up with me in the middle of it all and in three months into being married man we're gonna enjoy this life on the road not only are we pregnant but it's two I remember we went, we'd already had an ultrasound. They told us the baby was healthy. We're all good. Everything's fine. And everybody's gathered around together. I'm wearing blue and she's wearing pink. And we're kind of, you know, just bantering lightly over it, whether it's going to be a boy or a girl and da, da, da. And, you know, and finally the nurse stopped and like, you, 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 you have a doctor, right? You've had an ultrasound. We're like, yeah. She's like, so you know there's two of them. No. No, as a matter of fact, we don't. She's crying. I'm laughing. <laughs> she's like, what are we going to do? I guess we'll take them. <laughs> you put, bag them, bag them up. Let's, we'll, we'll, we'll take them both. I went outside. My mother-in-law, we've come a long way, hadn't we, Mom? God is good. He's kept me alive. Hey, I got the best mother-in-law there is in the world. I'm going to tell you, I... She is incredible, absolutely incredible. But it, didn't, it wasn't really an incredible moment right there. And I was like, there's two of them. My sister-in-law, Shelly, was sitting there. And she's like, he's lying. He's lying. Shelly said, he's not lying. I'm like, I ain't lying. I promise I ain't lying. <laughs> God ain't going to put more on us than we can bear. So I guess what, you're supposed to raise one of them. But we made it. Wasn't always easy, but we made it. It's not just in marriage. It's not just with your job. More than anything, it's with God. More than any other place in your life, you've got to be faithful living this. And we've got, we're real good at making promises when we need God to make something happen. Musicians, you can get ready. You ain't got to raise your hand because I don't want to put the limelight on anybody. Well, it'd be everybody because we've all done it. You ever look back on things and say, man, I really, uh, wish I'd have known I was getting that job anyway. <laughs> I, I, I wouldn't have put everything on the line at the altar. <laughs> Come on. How many of us, which is all of us, have said, God, if you'll do this, I'll give you everything. God did his part. The promise came. The answer came. The miracle came. But we hadn't done our part yet. I'm going to tell you the greatest thing. This woman could have easily, Hannah could have easily said, he doesn't know my name. And I guarantee you, I guarantee you, if Hannah would have went up, there's a good chance she could have been like, listen, listen, uh, I don't know if they called him Pastor Eli, Reverend Eli, or just Eli. I'm not sure how that worked. Y you may not remember me, but... You know, I was really having a hard time. I wasn't even in my right mind. I was depressed. I was just down. And, and, and you remember I told you I was going to do this? Are, are you going to hold me to that? I, I mean, are you, you don't even hear a conversation where she talked it out. You don't see where, uh, one conversation where she sat down with her husband and said, Look, we need to get together on this. What do you want to do? Do you really think we ought to do it? 
Nothing. The reason you read and I read the stories about an amazing prophet named Samuel that saw so many wonderful miracles and that all of these have the reason that we read all of these scriptures and the lives that were influenced by this man named Samuel, this amazing prophet in the word of the God. It is all because, not because Hannah prayed because she did that all the time, not just because she was desperate. But the reason we have this story and these lives that were changed is because there was a lady that said, hey, it's not just the promise that I'm going to stick to. Beyond the promise, I'm still going to be faithful. Everything I told God was his, it's going to be his. Everything I said I was going to give him, I'm going to give him. There is not an excuse that we can come up with. It's so easy in the heat of the moment to relieve ourselves from the promises we made to him. Well, I said I was going to give everything. I said I was going to be more faithful. I said... Come on. Every word. The Bible says we will give account for every idle word. I definitely think he's going to take account of the other. Preacher, what are you doing? It's supposed to be a happy day. This is a happy day because I'm going to tell you, some of the greatest blessings in your life and the greatest miracles are waiting on the other side of you doing what you told God you were going to do if he did what he did. And God's like, hey, I got something else for you. I'm just waiting for you to come through on what you told me you were going to do. You promised me we went into this. I promise you, whatever it is God's asking you to do, every single one of us in this place have got those moments. Sometimes it's when you're going through a heartache. Sometimes it's in your low time. Sometimes it's in a high time, whatever it may be. We've all had those places in our life where we felt God tugging on us and we started letting him know, God, look, I'm gonna, I want to do this. God, I'm going to let you have this. God, whatever you want to do here, whatever you want to do. We all have those moments. Let me tell you, God doesn't ask for anything unless it's for our good. If you feel a tug on your heart and you feel like God's saying, hey, I want you to let go of this. I want you to give this to me. I want you to lay this down on an altar. I promise you, he's not a monster that walks around trying to come up with ways to beat up on his people. He's not. He said, I know my thoughts towards you, thoughts of good and not of evil. He said, I desire to bless and not to curse. He loves you. He loves every one of you in here. And he wants to do great things in your life. He wants to touch your life. Wherever it is you're hurting, wherever you're torn, whatever it is, God loves you. He knows what you're going through. If he asks for anything, it's not to hurt. It is to heal and it's to make prosper. He wants to do it. He wants to. It's what we do on the other side of the promise that makes a difference. While you may not be able to relate to her as a mom, And you may not be able to relate to a lot of things on Mother's Day that you feel. I'll tell you one thing we can all relate to. And that is living beyond the promise. Being faithful beyond the promise. Beyond what I said at this altar. What you promise on this altar, what I promise on this altar has got to keep working on Monday and on Tuesday and on Wednesday. I can't just live Sunday at a time. Whatever happens in this place, whatever happens when my hands are lifted and I'm saying, God, I'll give you everything, whatever I do, whatever it is I say and whatever it is I purpose in my heart, it has got to walk out of these doors with me. It's got to get into my car with me. It's got to go to work with me. It's got to go home with me it's got to go beyond here because all too often we have great moments in his presence here and it stays here we've got to live beyond the promise some of you are in situations today not because God's against you but because there are things he's wanting to give and he's waiting he's waiting for us to step up and to do what we told him we were going to do if he opened that door or if he made this possible. God, he, he is not a man that he should lie. He said his arm is not slack concerning his promises. Whatever he says, he will do. But see, some of us are like, well, God said he was going to do this. No, 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 no. He keeps excellent records. Go check the tape. What did I say that I would do? The whole scripture is full of the words that say, if then, 
If my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves, turn from their wicked ways. If they'll do this, then will I hear from heaven. I will heal their land. I'll forgive their iniquities. If then, if then, what do you say? He said, if you'll do what you know to do, I promise you I'll do my part. If you will step out and do what I've called you to do, I promise you I won't leave you hanging. If you will, come on, come on. If you give him everything, then I promise you he'll take everything and he'll turn back into your life beyond what you ever could imagine it could have been. You can trust him. You may not, you may have found friends you can't trust and family you can't trust, but you can trust God. If you walked in here today and you don't feel you can trust anybody, you can trust him. You would just stand with me. I honor my sweet wife today. If you were up here preaching, I'd expect you to honor yours. In fact, when you see me, if there's anything good you see, she's a part of that, if not responsible, her and God are for all of it. There is no good in my life that is not because of her, because we're one. Now, if you see anything bad, that's on me. That's all me. But I'm thankful. I invited her into one world and then flipped the script and took her into another one. I've never heard her complain. I tell people all the time, they're like, well, I don't know. I'm like, I've never heard the other night God asked in that offering beyond anything I'd ever done. And the evangelist, Brother Harry, who went on, he said, well, were you in church? He said, no. He said, well, when you find out what y'all gave tonight, because that's true, I don't give anything. It's it's us. We do it. We give that. He said, that'll be it. She came in. She said, what did we give? I told her, okay. Never. She has never cared about money. It didn't matter. Didn't matter what we drove. Didn't matter what it. I, I put some pressure on a man. I've been blessed beyond what I could ever deserve. And now, I thank God. I want to do the same for you. I want to be faithful when it feels like it, and when it doesn't feel like it. When it seems like all of my answers to my prayers are rolling in, like waves on the shore, I want to be faithful. And when it feels like it's a drought and I'm in the middle of a desert and I can't find my way, even then, help me as she has done and as Job has done to be faithful when everything around me doesn't make sense. Help me to be faithful. I made you a promise that I'd live for you. I made you a promise I'd give you everything. Help me to honor every promise I've ever given you. Help me to be faithful beyond this altar and beyond Sunday night and Sunday morning and Wednesday night. God, when everything's falling apart, help me to be faithful. It is one of the most important words in Scripture. Preacher after preacher after preacher will stand up and talk about we are the called and we are the chosen. And they forget what I believe is the greatest. The Bible says that they made war with the Lamb. It says, and these were they that were with him, the called, the chosen, and the faithful. But then when we enter in, it doesn't say, well done, thy called and chosen. No, well done, thy good and faithful sir what do you say what do you try I'm telling you whether you're a mother a father single young person doesn't matter we must be faithful God help me to be faithful in all that I have promised you in all that I have given you in all that I have laid down on this altar in fact God if you really want to step out in faith right as these altars are open Ask God, God, if I ever promised you anything, 
if I ever promised you anything and I've forgotten about it, would you bring it to my mind so that I could honor everything I ever promised you? God, if I've ever, if I've ever, God, if you'll get my baby, I'll do this. God, if you'll heal my body, I'll do this. God, I promise you there's a blessing waiting on the other side of faithfulness. God always blesses faithfulness. If you're in this place this morning, if you're in this place and you know there's some things that you've said to God that haven't come to pass, I've asked, whether you're in your pew or in this altar, right now, can we begin to pray all over this place? Can we reaffirm that vow this morning? God, everything you asked me for, I'm giving it to you. Everything I promised you, God, it's yours. It's still yours. I'm not going back on my word. God, I've got to live beyond the promise. God, everything that you've done in this place, everything that you've spoken into my life at this altar, I'm taking it with me when I leave today, and it's going to be a part of my life. I will be faithful. I will be faithful. Come on, all over this place. If you're more comfortable in your pew, that's fine. You can bow your head. You can lift your hands. However you want to do it, however is comfortable to you. But I'm asking it. Get moms, if you did not grab a flower before you came in, please make sure that you stop there in the foyer at our photo booth, and also we have flowers that we would like to give to you. God bless, and have an awesome, awesome day. Don't forget, there will be no service here this evening. You